Hey, we give you the facts. It's not what you think. Popeye News Link. Young King. One yard. Bless. Good morning, Popeye. Grandma watch Popeye's every morning and every night. What am I think? What am I think? You are listening to Popeye News Links. This is the Admiral Tibet who I represent. And remember, the time is so serious. Contankerous and dangerous. This is Popeye News Links. Greetings. Greetings, viewers and subscribers. In today's journey, we are in the hills of Hanover. We're heading towards Montego Bay in the parish of St. James. Sit back, relax, and enjoy this journey with me. Now, Sir Dexton, <laughs> you spent your birthday in Jamaica yesterday. Well, you are still in Jamaica. A happy belated birthday to you. I am sure that yesterday... You had a wonderful birthday. And Sir Dexton, you are an ardent supporter of this channel. No respect. Thanks for that. Sir Dexton, may you live to see a whole lot more birthdays. So, my question to you is, did you listen to the interview I did with the female this morning? Do you believe her or do you think she is lying? Do you think she's innocent in all of this? Or do you think she's a kerosene like Sir P would call her? Or a Krasmite like on this part would call her? There is always two, sometimes three sides to a story. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to be releasing an interview with the female who you heard threatening her. Also, you're going to hear a conversation I had with the mother of one of the guys involved. Both of them, they have a whole heap to say. There is also a video involved. You heard the female saying that the guy was videoing her? Well, I have seen that video. The question is, was she a willing participant or was she forced? Stand by for that. Tomorrow morning, more to come. In the news today, that man on your screen. His name is Mr. Keith Albert Mobo. He was born on December 29, 1944, 79 years old. And he was a retiree living at Spring Falls in Ontario, Canada. We are told that Mr. Mobo, he arrived in Jamaica about two weeks ago with other members of his family to include his 75-year-old wife. We are told that he was taking medication for hypertension and diabetes and he last visited his doctor in january mr mobo and his wife they were staying at a resort in negril in the parish of westmoreland yesterday afternoon mr mobo his wife and a friend they left the resort where they were staying and they went to a nearby resort on the beach about some minutes to four o'clock Mr. Mobo, he went for a swim in the sea. We are told that Mr. Mobo, he was observed walking in the water, but shortly thereafter, he fell over. He was not seen for a short while, but moments later, Mr. Mobo, he was seen afloat in the water. An alarm was raised and Mr. Mobo's friend retrieved him from the water. Mr. Mobo, he was lifeless and from all indication, he has already died. The police, they were called and they commenced investigations. We are told that no marks of violence was seen on Mr. Mobo's body and the police, they are not suspecting any foul play. Sad indeed. Now, over in Portmore in the parish of St. Catherine, a 65-year-old handyman, he was a raster man. His name is Mr. Henry Burton. He was living in the bushes at Central Way in Silverton. We are told that about two weeks ago, Mr. Burton, he had a stroke and he was on medication. Yesterday afternoon, Monday, February 19, we are told that residents of the area, they stumbled upon Mr. Burton's lifeless body. He was fully dressed and lying on his face. From all indication, Mr. Burton, he died sometime before he was found. 
the police, they were called and we are told that they processed this scene. We are also told that no foul play is suspected, but a post-mortem examination will be done to ascertain the cause of his death. Sad indeed. In this next story, this one took place yesterday morning. Monday, February 19, about 7.30. It took place at Bottom Cambridge in the parish of St. James. We are told that, acting on intelligence, a joint police military team, they carried out an operation in the community. The outside of our premises was searched and bingo. One black and gold AK-47 rifle with a magazine affixed containing five 7.62 rounds were found in a large vegetated area. No one was arrested in connection with this find. But intelligencers, intelligencers, big up on yourself and St. James Police. Job well done. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. There are some of you. Whenever me say intelligence has big up on yourself. Uno come on and uno has say, Papa, you shouldn't say that because the boy them are going to know say somebody. Ca-. Uno stop the foolishness. Uno stop the foolishness. Intelligence has big up on yourself. And still in the parish of St. James, we are told that a 32-year-old taxi driver, he's popularly known as twin he is lucky to be alive this is after he was attacked and shot at yesterday morning monday february 19 about some minutes to 12 midday it took place at serenity drive in the rosites area of st james we are learning that two twin brothers they were at the upstairs section of their family's unfinished house one of the brothers he was inside the upstairs bedroom while the other brother he was at the bedroom doorway we are told that three hoodlums now two of them are known as skitter and toey they enter the yard with guns in hands they then ran to the upstairs section of the house and opened gunfire at the twin brother who was standing at the bedroom door the twin he managed to run into a room then jumped through the bedroom window onto a mango tree he then made good his escape from the hoodlums he was not shot but he received several cuts and bruises the hoodlums they then made good their escape so Towie and skitter and we are told that skitter he's a well-known housebreaker in the area they are wanted by the police we are told that some days ago skitter he was trying to break into a house and he was beaten up and that is why they came to kill the twins. When this crime scene was processed, eight 9mm pen shells were recovered from the scene. The mayhem. Now, in this next story, we are learning that a man died in what is suspected to be a hit and run accident early this morning along the Howard Cook Boulevard in Montego Bay. Also, two men died in a traffic accident along the Spring Hill Main Road in the parish of Trelawney early this morning as well. Now, I'm gathering the details and will be updating these stories in a subsequent video. Stand by for that. In this next story, I carried a story on Saturday. I told you about an incident that took place the previous night. Friday, February 16, about some minutes to 11 o'clock. It took place at a shop at Harton Grove District in the Ramble Police area of Hanover. I told you that two men were shot and one of them died on the spot. His name is Anthony Getton, but he was popularly known as Chopper. Chopper was 60 years old and he operated a shop in the area. Chopper, he's originally from Malcolmites in Lucy in the parish of and over. Back in the day, Chopper, he used to load buses at the Lucy Bus Park. He later got married and he went to live in the hills. In the report I gave you on Saturday, I told you that Chopper, he was involved in a conflict with two brothers and one of them had broken one of Chopper's hands and that matter was still pending in the courts. But no, it was not Chopper 
they were involved in the conflict with. It's actually the other man who was shot at the shop and he was in fact the target of this attack. His name is Rodson Ramsey. Next week, Wednesday, he would be celebrating his 44th birthday. I said would because Rodson who was shot in his neck. He died in hospital on Sunday, February 18. The mayhem. In this next update, I told you about an incident that took place at Coxseat in the Sherwood content area of Trelawney. It took place early Sunday morning, February 18, about 2 o'clock. A 59-year-old farmer named William Jenkins, but he was popularly known as Samson. He was chopped to death. Well, the police, they have now charged Samson's 60-year-old cousin named Roy Rose, but he's popularly known as Mafia. It is said that for the past two weeks, Mafia, he had been acting strange. He had even gone as far as to burn down his own house. We are told that Mafia, he has given the police a caution statement admitting to killing his cousin Samson. So, Mafia, he'll be going to the courts shortly in this next update i carried a story last thursday on tuesday afternoon february 13 about some minutes to six o'clock that man on your screen his name is patrick matthews but he was popularly known as chips chips was almost 31 years old and he was an electrician living at new harbor village in the old harbor area of saint catherine I told you that Chips, he drove his motor car to Casanora Drive in the Nagawed area of Portmore where he dropped off some workmen who were doing some work for him. As he was about to drive out of the community, he was approached by a hoodlum. The hoodlum, he spoke with Chips for a short while. He then pulled a gun and opened gunfire, hitting Chips to his abdomen and his left hand. Chips, he ended up dying in the Spanish Town Hospital the next day, Wednesday, February 14. Well, the police, they have made a breakthrough in that case. We are told that the guy who killed Chips, he was trying to flee the area after he committed the murder, but he was held by the police. He has since been charged for murder. His name is D'Angelo Creighton. He is 33 years old and he's living at Savannah District in the Linstead area of St. Catherine. He has been charged for the offense of murder and he'll be going to the courts shortly. This next incident, it took place along Thompson Penn Lane in the Old Arbor Bay area of St. Catherine. It took place last night, Monday, February 19, about 9 o'clock. Our information is that a man, his name is Kirkland Fitzgerald Anderson. He was 34 years old and he was said to be a taxi driver living at Blackwood Gardens in the Old Arbor area of St. Catherine. We are told that Kirkland and someone else were in the white Toyota Succeed motor car that he operates as a taxi when hoodlums pounced. The hoodlums, they opened gunfire hitting Kirkland all over his body. The hoodlums, they then made good their escape on foot in the area. From all indication, Kirkland, he died on the spot. The police, they were called and when they processed this crime scene, 12 9mm pen shells were recovered from the scene. The mayhem. The me so let me ask you something. <laughs> let me ask you something. Have you hit on the love button as yet? If you have not yet done so, remember to hit on it. Also, if you are over here watching our videos and you have not yet subscribed, hit on the subscribe button as also. Hit on the notification bell. Then click all so that whenever we drop a new video, you will be one of the first to be notified. In the final story for today, that man on your screen. His name is Randall Stone, but he was popularly known as Horsemouth. Kino or Weasel. Next month on March 3, Weasel, he would be celebrating his 33rd birthday. 
Weasel. He was a bike taxi operator and he lived at Good Hope in the Negril Police area of Westmoreland. We are told that Weasel, he is originally from the hills of Westmoreland, from a little district known as Bath after your pass, Kentucky. As an adult, he moved to the Good Hope area where he could be seen running his bike taxi in and around Negril. Our information is that Weasel's upbringing wasn't the best because his mother, she had mental issues and she would verbally and physically abuse him as a child. She died from cancer. We are told that Weasel, he grew up staying out of trouble. He was always on the hustle. It was that hustling he was on last night when a hoodlum decided to rob him of his livelihood. Not only that, the hoodlum decided to take away his life. We are told that Weasel, he was out operating his Red Cobra CG motorcycle. About some minutes after 8 o'clock last night, Monday, February 19, Weasel, he was seen riding his bike along the Tankill Main Road in Negril with a male passenger on it. Shortly after that, gunshots were heard being fired and the guy who was the pillion on the bike, he was seen riding the bike out of the area. When persons went and made checks, Weasel, he was seen lying face down with gunshot wounds to his upper body. Weasel, he apparently died on the spot. The police, they were called and when they processed this crime scene, Nine 9 millimeter pen shells were recovered from the scene. Welcome to Jamrock. The mayhem continues. Blessed love, everybody. Tell a friend, for tell a friend, for tell a friend about Papa in News Link and PNL Blog TV. Like, subscribe, and share. Brick Silver Sin, if we just unite, what a country this will be. Jamaica, oh Jamaica, me sweet Jamaica. Crime is a mashup Jamaica. 